Hi everybody, I'm Segev and this is the AI Art. In today's video, we're going to talk about Adobe's Firefly. This is Adobe's answer to generative AI. It's quite amazing with tons of feature. Let's check it out. Okay, so let's get started. Open the browser and I'm going to go to firefly.adopi.com the link is in the description of course and let's get in immediately you will be asked to agree to the user guidelines it might ask you to log in if you don't have an account just create an account using uh, google or facebook or one of the methods and once you agree to the guidelines which basically say don't abuse the model don't create a not suitable for work uh, images uh, you can't create violence or, or nudity, of course. Once you click agree, uh, it will show you uh, in a bit uh, about the features of the Firefly models. Uh, but we're going to go over three main features in this video. Text to image, the generative field, and the text effects. Do note that Firefly gives you 25 uh, free uh, monthly generations. It's not much. Let's take a look and we'll start with the text to image. So once we put in the prompt, an apple on a wooden table. I love this prompt. We click generate. And you can see the beautiful images it generated out of the box. I'm skipping ahead every time I click the generate. So of course it will take a few seconds until it generates the images. Uh, so on the, uh, once you get into the interface, it will give you kind of a quick tour. We will skip this tour and we will go over all the features that we have here. So on the top, first of all, you can choose between two models, Firefly Image 2 and Firefly Image 1. The first one is more um, of a stylized, it, it, it's, it's better for generating a more uh, surreal and artistic uh, images. The second one is much better uh, for a more photorealistic and high details images. I usually, usually use the image two. Uh, it is rare that I will use the image one. Aspect ratio allows you to choose between four aspect ratios. It doesn't allow you to specific uh, resolutions, uh, but I find it kind of enough. Uh, if I needed a different resolution, I will go with the one closer and I will just crop the image or cut it out. But uh, let's change it to a landscape and click refresh. So out of the box, you can see it generated four images. Each generation, uh, it's, each click on generate creates four images. You can see that the apple is very photorealistic. It looks very nice. And you can see that it automatically changed the content type to photo. If I choose a specific content type and I will click generate again, it will actually force, you can see a tag of art here, it will actually force the model to generate a more artistic and less photorealistic image. Let's take a look. So you can see it's much more uh, a drawing than a photorealistic one. And if you go down to the effects, you can actually embed specific effects on the image. So let's say that I want it an artistic and I want it to have a cyberpunk style. I'm not sure how uh, an apple can be a cyberpunk, but I guess we'll know very promptly. So you can see, actually it did a really good job in generating a cyberpunk apple on a wooden table. I really like this image. It's kind of nice. Um, so there are plenty of effects here to play with. You can just go over them. They are categorized uh, by the type of effect. So uh, either movement or uh, themes. Uh, and so on and so forth. Let's do a vector look. It will try and generate a more of a vector style, a cyberpunk artistic apple because I le left the cyberpunk tag here. So you can see it actually embedded the tags very well and we have a beautiful apple on a table in an artistic style of a cyberpunk vector looks. I really like it. Let's go over some more things that we have here. I'm going back to the photo and once you click a photo on the content type on the bottom, 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 bottom of the UI, you will see that there is a photo setting section. 
Opening the photo second section allows you to choose the field of view, the shutter speed, and the aperture. So everything of this, uh, once once you stand with your mouse on the um, uh, on the controller, it will tell you uh, uh, what it does. And actually, if we'll play with the field of view, let's make it a much wider angle and click generate. And what we are expecting to see is a wider image uh, where the camera seems to spread more than if it was a zoom. So you can see that the background seems much wider than before and it gives you a sense of a wider camera uh, lens. Another cool feature you can play with here is the color and tone. If you want to give the image a specific coloring, for example, golden. Oh, it actually created the apple in gold. It's very nice. Uh, it's actually looking very awesome. And let's get back to none. And if you look at the lighting itself, you can, oh, that's the golden hour which is, looks very nice. You can actually change the composition as well. So the compositions allows you uh, to generate, for example, a shot from above and click generate. And we are expecting to see an image of an apple on a wooden table from the top. Let's see how it works. As you can see, it did a very good job and it nailed it. It's clearly a photo of an apple on a wooden table or a wooden floor. And it is an amazing shot from above. Very nice. One of the coolest features Firefly's text to image has to offer is the reference image. The reference image allows you to choose a styling that will be embedded into the model and will generate the images on that specific styling. So you can either choose from a reference image that is built into the interface or you can upload your own image. Let's, for starters, choose uh, an image from the reference. I really like this uh, purple bluish uh, uh, glowing concept and we click generate. So you can see it gave a beautiful stylized image embedding the, the neon style lighting. Looks very nice, very awesome. It seems to neglect the shot from above. I guess it took more weight to the styling more uh, more than the composition. Anyway, it's not something that I want to keep, so I remove it. And let's now, instead of using a reference, you know what, let's check another reference image. Let's take, for example, um, the pencil sketch. That looks nice. Let's click generate and see what we'll get. A very nice image. Uh, as you can see, it missed two images to get a second more, but you can clearly see clearly looks like a pencil sketch and it's an apple on a wooden table. I really like those results. So now the last thing we're going to test is upload our own styling uh, with our own image. I downloaded from the internet uh, some images. Let me find them. Okay, so let's take for example this Picasso style and let's click generate. Let's see if it can do its work on the apple and generate a Picasso style apple on a wooden table. So as you can see, the styling is clearly reflected. I think Picasso would have been proud in this image. And let's try another style. This time we're going to try a GTA style. So I downloaded a GTA style image. And let's click on generate. Let's see how it creates an apple in a GTA style. Very nice. As you can see, uh, one of the greatest feature of this model is the way it implements the styling. I really like it. I really encourage you to play with the image and all it's got to offer. Uh, I know that 25 images per month is a bit low, um, but you know, uh, it's better than nothing. So let's go uh, to the next part of the video and check out the two uh, other features Firefly has to offer. So the next feature is the generative fill. It's an amazing feature that allows you to change and manipulate the image. It's called inpainting. Let's click upload image and we can choose whatever image we want. Let's for example, take the image of this cute cat. And let's say for example, that I want to get rid of the cat because I really like the background here and I want to use it for something else. I can just mark the cat 
you can change the size of the brush using the square brackets on the keyboard and I just masking out the cat itself you don't have to be precise here and I can just click generate without putting any prompt instead once you're not putting any prompt the model will try and fill the gaps and and reconstruct the background of the image let's see if it can make it check it out look at this result if I would have to guess I would say that there was never a cat in this image and as you can see it gives you several variations so generated three variations here that you can choose from if you don't like the results you can just click more and it will generate three more variations so as you can see now instead of only three variations I have six variations to choose from and each one of them did an excellent job if you ask me I think I'm going to go with this one it actually preserved the blurriness of the background and the blurriness of the foreground it's pretty amazing and now I'm going to keep now let's see what we can do uh, uh, else let's say I want to add a small shoe here in this area I can also paint the shape of the shoe or something like that and here in the prompt I will just a uh, uh, blue shoe a blue old shoe let's see how it will cope with that so as as you can see the model generated beautiful shoes embedded them into the image it actually looks very nice there are some uh, you know oddities here and there but if you'll just create more variations you will find the image that you want I really like it I like how it generated it in in between the the blurred and overall looking at the image it looks quite amazing I would never have guessed that this was an add-on that the original image had a gray cat instead of these shoes so this is the generative feel I assume you can play with it and enjoy enjoy it and next let's take a look on the last feature we're going uh, to go over today and this will be the text effect one of my favorite so the idea of the text effect is to allow you generate prompts generate images in the shape of a specific text so let's just for the sake of our test I don't know pick the AI art and let's say we want it to be out, made out of spaghetti give it a go and you can already see the texts and it will try and generate each character of the text out of spaghetti it's very nice doesn't look that tasty if I have to um, admit but you can see it gives you four variations of the generation and this one looks a bit better let's add some meatballs I have click on generate on the right side in the tools you can either choose a uh, sample prompt you can oh it looks <laughs> either either terrifying or very tasty I'm not sure <laughs> uh, you can choose the match shape uh, if you choose lose the AI will allow itself to get out of lines of the text I usually use uh, medium uh, it gives a good balance between being very tight on the text or very loose uh, as you can see the loose really allows the model to go wild um, and you can also choose uh, a different font I think that this round font is much better for the spaghetti we can also change the background color and give the text color uh, um, if you're not uh, uh, informing on any specific color let's say instead of spaghetti and meatballs let's say it is made out of balloons and let's say we want it to have a text color of red the model would try and generate the balloons in a red color or a red tint or, or something of that sort it didn't really work but the balloons are without a doubt very beautiful and that's about it so before wrapping up this video I really want to thank all the subscribers all the people that took time and commented on the videos thank you very much uh, I'm really excited about it uh, if you like the video let me know about it just click the like if you want to see more videos hit the subscribe we also have a discord community uh, I will put the link in the description we have a beautiful site and we try to add features to it every day thank you very much 
Um, and hopefully see you on the next video. Bye-bye.